Britain has a rich maritime and trading history, and the busy ports and harbours are central to our economy and recreation, while our seas are home to a huge diversity of marine life. A great threat to both biodiversity and the economy is the introduction of alien species. These are plants and animals which do not naturally occur in the area, but have been moved here by human activities. If these species then start to spread and cause damage to the environment, economy and the way we live, then they are called invasive alien species. Almost a hundred marine alien species are thought to be in our waters and are estimated to cost the UK economy at least hundred million pounds per year. So where do they come from and how do they get here? Almost half of marine non-native species arrive in the UK via boats and shipping, for example, by attaching to hulls or as larvae in ballast water. And about a third have been introduced by aquaculture activities, often hitching a ride along with farmed stock. Some species have been introduced many times before they take hold, but once established, they can be spread around the coast in many different ways, such as by attaching to recreational or commercial vessels as hull fowling, by human introduction as live bait, or mariculture related releases, or by natural dispersal including on marine litter. Invasive alien species can often grow at tremendous rates, using up the food, space and light that native species need to survive, or smothering them to form monocultures which can damage entire ecosystems and cause large problems for marine business sectors such as mariculture. For example, the carpet sea squirt that is originally from the northwest Pacific is now common around the south coast of England and grows in mat-like sheets on hard surfaces. It smothers fish spawning grounds and shellfish farms, reducing stock health and leading to high rates of mortality. Another pest for fisheries and aquaculture is the invasive slipper limpet, which first arrived from North America along with imported oysters. The slipper limpet can grow on other shellfish and cover extensive areas of natural shellfish habitat resulting in economic losses to commercial fisheries. And if seabed-grown mussels and oysters become infested, then it can be very costly to clean and sort the catch. These invasive non-native species, along with many others, such as wakami and Japanese wireweed, can also foul vessels and clog or damage important marine infrastructure, such as water intakes, fish cages, fishing gear, propellers and lock gates. Invasive seaweeds, when washed ashore, can also form large smelly heaps along the coast, which beachgoers find off-putting. Two more examples are the trumpet tube worm and the brush-clawed crab. This invasive crab was introduced more recently and is originally from Asia. It eats the native shore crab and may pose a real issue for anglers who use the native crab as bait. Warming seas caused by climate change may also increase the spread of some invasive species such as the trumpet tube worm from the southern hemisphere. The tube worm forms dense encrustations up to a metre thick. Within just a few weeks, it can cover most underwater surfaces, particularly metal objects such as props and anodes, and is very difficult to remove. There are many different ways of trying to control and treat invasive alien species, such as applying anti-fouling, air drying the infected surface, enclosing the site, wrapping the fouled surface in plastic, chemical treatment, and manual removal of the species. However, in most cases, attempts at eradication are costly and unsuccessful, and so it makes it all the more important to focus on preventing them from arriving and spreading, for example, through biosecurity planning and early warning systems. Biosecurity planning involves taking practical steps to reduce the risk of moving species from one place to another and becoming invasive. It involves gathering information about how people use their local environment, listing any high-risk activities, and then working out how to reduce their risk of introducing or spreading alien species. You do not need to be a marine biologist to spot an alien species. Just look out for changes to the natural environment. Invasive species will often look like they don't belong and may grow very quickly and cover extensive areas. Everyone can lower their own risk of spreading non-native species on land or in the sea. It is simple to follow the check, clean, dry advice to ensure that you, your boat and all your kit is checked for any plant or animal material, cleaned with fresh water well away from the water's edge and dried when possible. 
Every sector and natural environment is potentially impacted by marine non-native species in some way. From reducing natural biodiversity, to increasing cleaning costs of nets, pontoons or boats, through to impacting commercial fisheries and aquaculture, or physically clogging infrastructure. To learn more about how you can prevent the spread of a non-native species, just visit www.nonnativespecies.org and search for RAPID.